first time I remember picking up a guitar, I was at friends' houses who had these beginner guitars with less than six strings on them. You know, you come across a guitar with four strings on it. And then my grandmother bought one from a tag sale that again did not have all six strings on it. I didn't mind. And then when I got a guitar with all six strings, well, I found that very exciting because I had all the strings that a guitar was supposed to have and the sky was the limit at that point. And I was 13 when I did that. The best thing about touring is the familiarity that gets developed and bred through having the same crew day after day, year after year. The setting up shop and going from room to room and understanding how that works almost without any words at all, just tacitly understanding the flow of the day is, is one of my favorite things. You just, you just wave hi to everybody as if it's an office building. Least favorite part, off days. You might think it would be the best part of a tour as an off day, but it's the least favorite part of a tour because you're not doing anything that day that would make touring worthwhile. <laughs> you're just staring out of your hotel window at a panda pavilion in a mall, and you're just waiting for the next day you get to go play. So I don't love off days. The last time I heard a guitar player who blew me away was on Instagram. Her name is Melanie Fay. I had to look it up because I only know her as rainbow underscore fever underscore 1998 underscore. The thing that's special about her is she's young, but she plays with feeling that you're supposed to have to play a lot more years to have. And we've all seen, he's a nine-year-old and he's playing Purple Haze, but there's another dimension to being able to play the strings a certain way, and she has it. Right. Hear the way she's like pulling notes out? No. She's doing just fine without me. One time I made a throat coat tea, you know, and I had a tea bag and a cup. A string came out of the tea bag and I swallowed the string, but not all the way. So the string was just hanging over the back of my throat and wouldn't go anywhere. And I had to keep singing. A lot of skill involved in continuing the show no matter what, very seldom. Would you have to say, guys, you know what, I'm sorry. I mean, you just keep going. Stomach problems, you keep going, you know. There have been a couple times we've thrown a drum solo in where we didn't plan on it, but for the most part, you, wouldn't, you just can't tell. The other thing I would tell people that I learned is never apologize from the stage. Never say, I'm sorry. Because that engenders a sense of, um, like it, it, makes, it makes a sorry for you, so like if someone has a cold or if someone's losing their voice, you just never say I'm sorry. Most people can't tell you that you're losing your voice and as soon as you go, oh, you guys, I'm so sorry, it, you'd be amazed. It makes other people get ambulatory for you and that's, it's a very funny relationship. It's like you just have to always take care of them. They can't, they're not supposed to take care of you. Although, there are people who have that thing going, you know. <laughs> 